I used to have a do-it-yourself mentality. Maybe I learned that early in life. But for my first 30 years, I rarely asked for help, professionally or personally. And looking back, I have lots of regret knowing how much better off I could have been. So as I started my entrepreneurial journey while still in corporate, I still had this tendency to figure it out myself. Well, now I know what to call that, self-sabotage. You can't afford to be your own worst enemy when the stakes are that high. When you're trying to shift from corporate to entrepreneurship, that is a massive move, a life-changing one. So today, we're going to unpack the top forms of self-sabotage to watch out for. Let's dive in. Welcome to Uncage Yourself. I'm Matt Doan. On this show, we explore strategies to help family-focused professionals smartly graduate corporate life and build entrepreneurial freedom. Our goal, maximize freedom, income, and impact. See matthewdone.com for more. Now, let's dive in. If you let it, self-sabotage will kill your transformation in moving from corporate to entrepreneurship. Don't underestimate how much you can get in your own way. We can't afford to let that happen. So based on lessons learned from myself and working with over 125 clients and hanging around so many peers that have made this shift, I wanna highlight for you what I believe are the top 11 dream killers when you try to make that move from corporate to entrepreneurship. Let's break these down. First one, analysis paralysis. This is where you analyze every angle without taking action. You freeze up and you overthink every little pro and con. Your analytical corporate mind that's been running the show for so long that you get paid well to use is actually your own worst enemy here. Instead of embracing possibility, which is what you need as an entrepreneur to, to have faith in yourself, in possibility, you're letting your skepticism mine stomp that out. Skepticism is overruling possibility. You, you can imagine you're just going to keep analyzing forever, staying stuck on the starting line. That's number one. Second one, having passive income fantasies. I see this every single week. People who are lured by real estate, franchises, digital products like e-courses online, there are so many problems here. When you're trying to move from corporate to entrepreneurship, these are simple little vehicles that will not do the job. First, realize none of those things are actually passive work at all. Don't lie to yourself. Don't be fooled. There's a ton of active work. And here's the thing. Number one, they take way too long. If you get into real estate franchises, boring businesses, there is a long lead time, often five, 10 years before real cash flow that can supplant your corporate salary would take place. If you go the e-course route, like digital products, you're going to need a large online audience of following that takes years to build too. But the more important thing I think that people neglect is that starting these types of new income streams drain you. Most people, like 99% of people on these passive income streams, don't like the work. So you're drained in your day job. Now you're drained in this passive income side hustle stuff. And you are just exhausted even more. I'll call it double burnout. You can't afford for that to take place. Don't fall for passive income fantasies. This is not the entrepreneurship that you need. Number three, what I call the corporate doppelganger. This is where you replicate your current job under your own name. So say you are great at data analytics or some sort of digital marketing. You take this job, you've been doing it for 15, 20 years in corporate environments, and you say, oh, well, this is all I know. This is what I'm good at. Clearly, if I do it under my own name, my own business, like an LLC, ultimately, this is going to be where freedom is. No. That is a bad move. For most people that I speak with, if you're frustrated with your current path, realize you are done with this path. Mentally, you've checked out. So even doing the same type of work under your own name, you're still done with it. You're not going to enjoy it. There's no energy. And without energy, you're going to fail. You need energy. You have been drained to this point. So you can't afford to do anything where you just do a corporate replication thing under your own name. 
don't want to just recycle old skills and not have any safety nets of a corporate environment now. You need to learn to challenge yourself to new heights. Let's build on that. So number four then, this dream killer, self-sabotage, is what I call genius neglect. Realize that your unique value goes far beyond your resume, but you're staying in what I call the resume cage. You're letting your skills, your past job history, your degrees, certifications narrowly confine you as to what's possible for your future. You think those labels and accomplishments, your LinkedIn profile are what qualify you for the future. That is extremely limiting. Your talents go far beyond anything you've done in your own corporate path. So you've got to go through a process to discover those hidden superpowers, that genius lying inside of you dormant right now, those talents, skills, triumphs, everything you've ever overcome in your life is a superpower. You need to learn to discover that professionally and personally. That's all raw material as source material for your genius. And you got to learn to direct that genius once you've surfaced it, packaged it, and then direct it at people that you feel excited to serve. That is the move to make. Do not neglect your genius. Hey, are you done with corporate life? Are you ready to leverage your success and finally build entrepreneurial freedom? If so, check out uncagedworkshop.com for my secret guide on smartly graduating corporate and building a business you love. It's a short training video that could forever change how you experience work and life. Head to uncagedworkshop.com or see the link in the show notes. Now, back to the show. Number five, I see this all the time. People who pick crappy business models. And the top one is when you take one time for money game, where you're earning a certain salary for a certain number of hours generally in a year, and you create your own time for money game. It's an exhausting trap. We can't afford to create a new model like that. Instead, once you've centralized your genius, what you do is you build a business that maximizes that genius. So let's say you're great at helping people transition from a rigid military environment to corporate America. That's your specialty. So Instead of creating a time for money where you're just endlessly coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, you create a high leverage environment, a group coaching environment where a whole mix of people can come together. You can create a premium environment from a price model, from a value model, and then you have higher quality clients come in and you get to serve more people at once. You've created a system that has leverage. You're not stuck in some endless time for money, one-on-one -on -one coaching model that'll exhaust you and severely cap you even more than corporate. So you need to make sure that your business model is designed for leverage and ease. And I would argue it should absolutely be based online. It can have in-person elements, but design it for online because that's the lifestyle you need. That's where leverage, scale, exponential growth, and frankly, the lifestyle you want for you and your family is sourced from. So don't fall into a crappy business model. Number six, this dream killer, commodity positioning. This is where you blend in and you look like one of many. I'm another life coach. I'm another cybersecurity consultant. I'm another B2B sales professional. No, you can't afford to position yourself so that you look like everybody else. So what do we do as humans? We are categorizing machines. We wanna quickly, in an instant, put you in one bucket and another. So if you give someone a label that lets them put you in a large bucket with everybody else, you're screwed. You can't afford for that to take place. So if you have boring, generic messaging, you give yourself a generic title that sounds just like so many thousands of other people, my goodness, are you setting yourself up for a disastrous situation? Boring messaging, generic messaging, the way you position yourself, it puts prospects to sleep. It puts you into a place you don't want to be. You don't want to be a commodity in their mind. You need to be an anti-commodity. You need to leverage your uniqueness, your genius, and frame it up to the world where you say, I am one of one. You frame, name, and claim your own category as we talk about. Check the personal category episode to see what I'm talking about there. That's where you go anti-commodity and build a one-of-one -one category so people perceive you as wholly unique and valuable. Seventh dream killer diversification disaster. 
So this is where people prematurely diversify their efforts. In entrepreneurship, you have to focus on one thing mentality. That's a great book, The One Thing by Gary Keller. I suggest every aspiring entrepreneur goes to read that. This is where you focus on one category, one dream client, one high ticket offer. That's where I suggest everybody focus when they move from corporate to entrepreneurship. Don't get into some low ticket battle. Don't try to make a volume play. None of that. One category, one dream client, one high ticket offer. And you need to focus on building this one thing, this little business off the ground as much as it needs to be to get launched. You need to focus longer, harder than you'd ever expect. What you think might take one year probably takes three. And let that be the case. Do not prematurely diversify. Do not spin the second plate until the first plate is self-powering. This is the whole idea. People try to spread too thin. They want five income streams all at once. So guess what? None of them get off the ground. Get the first one hot, spinning, validated, recurring revenue. You've got it systematized. You've got automations. You can even backfill yourself. So you're not the one really in charge of it all. You are the owner. That's the move. Then diversify. Don't do it prematurely. The eighth type of self-sabotage is lone wolf syndrome. This is where you're trying to learn everything alone and do it alone, where you say, ah, oh, I've got all the information I need. And it's true, right? Over books, podcasts, YouTube, social media, AI, you have endless information. You have all the information you could ever need to pull off anything in this world. I'd argue it's all free at this point. But you have so much self-sabotage. You will get in your way so much. You will take years when it could take months. And it might not come to life at all because you're just gonna keep roadblocking yourself. You won't see your blind spots. You won't know to take a certain shortcut. Isolation and, and lack of real support and mentorship is going to kill you. So don't think that information is going to feed your transformation. We need to go out there with people, with peers and mentors to ensure that we are not lone wolves because no lone wolves ever make it. It doesn't work that way. You need to invest in your entrepreneurial tribe and community. Find a group of people, and this might be several. This might be evolving over time as it has for me. I've had, I think, about 13 coaches in total so far. I have four at this given moment. I have so many peers and tribes that I can plug into, so many investments I make every single year. I invest a lot. I am always plugging in, pushing myself, knowing that immersing amongst all these people is the greatest gift I can give myself, and I am my greatest asset, so I invest accordingly. Ninth form of self-sabotage is perfection procrastination. This is where you're waiting until you're 100% ready, or your mind's in a great state, or life is easy, or the corporate job settled down, or your kids don't demand so much. Maybe you're in a high sports season. They're all playing so many sports, and you're shuttling them around. Do you really believe it's going to get better anytime soon? Do you think chaos just slows down? No, it's always just going to change form at best. 100% ready just means you have to be so committed and locked into your future self that you are going to take action. You are done tolerating what's taking place. Let go of it needing to be ready. Let go of if you've started your business or you need to tell the world about it or post it to LinkedIn or you want to share your website or launch your product. Don't wait till you're 100% ready. You need to get into the mode of rapid experimentation and shipping quickly, shipping before ready. Those are all vital muscles to build. They're vital to build your business and make sure that you keep living this way as an entrepreneur. So focus instead of procrastination and making it perfect, focus on taking daily imperfect action and getting feedback. Think about five pieces of feedback you get throughout a week. You launch a post, ask for feedback, launch a post, ask for feedback. You have conversations, you have some Zoom calls with former colleagues. Think about all that experimentation and that feedback over the course of a week versus spending months trying to get it right in your cave and then launching it to the world. Because you know what you're going to hear? Crickets. You can't afford for that to happen. Tenth dream killer, shiny object seduction. This is where, of course, you are seeing so many opportunities, so many more influences, pathways that you can take, where this might be a magic bullet here, another opportunity there. 
You can't afford to do that. The reality is you need one good enough strategy and mentorship to pull you forward. And then you stay ruthlessly focused on that one thing. Put blinders up. Manage your technology in the right ways. Curate your feed. Have accountability partners so that you don't chase shiny objects. You can't afford to do that because when you are following the one thing mentality, distracted by shiny objects will kill you, right? Can't afford that. Instead, maintain laser focus for longer than you're comfortable for. Blinders up, stay accountable, follow the strategy. Brick by brick, we build this thing forward. That leads to the 11th and final dream killer. No accountability. This will destroy you. And if you've never had coaches, mentorship in your life, people that really systematically say, what are you doing? What are you committing to specifically? And then follow up with you and you commit to them and you measure progress. This is vital in entrepreneurship. Otherwise, you will fall victim to self-sabotage like I have so many times. And I still continue to. I've gotten so much better because I've invested in a community and structure and accountability systems that keep me focused. But man, we all need outcome-driven support and accountability because that external accountability from other people in your life, and I'm saying beyond family, family is like a weird, messy relationship. Don't ask your spouse for the professional accountability you need. That's a little dangerous, mixing church and state. But get people, mentors, coaches, accountability partners in your world that make sure you stay on track and you do what you say you were going to do day by day. Do not let time frames slip. So those are the big 11 forms of self-sabotage I've seen when people are trying to shift from corporate to entrepreneurship. You can't afford to let self-sabotage kill your dream. It is far too important. If you've been listening to me for a while, following my content, you see that this type of thing takes a lot of work and there's gonna be lots of things that can try to knock you down. Now, if you need help with that, I'll tell you the first place that my clients come is we have what I call a breakthrough session. So I'd encourage you to have one for yourself too so you can get the clarity and break through the self-sabotage that could be killing you right now. You can book that at matthewdone.com forward slash talk. And in that conversation, we're going to talk about what is blocking you right now. What are those fears? What do you want on the other side of those fears? Why is it so important to make this shift to graduate corporate life and to build entrepreneurial freedom for you and your family? So book that at matthewdone.com forward slash talk. So I hope you see that these are all things I fall victim to all the peers that I've learned from, all the coaches. I've learned this from so many other people because these are so common. They're forms of the human condition. They're going to show up. You're scared. You're trying to play safe. You want security. These are all inherent parts of our wiring. So this self-sabotage comes up again and again and realize you are not special, my friend. None of us are. We're all going to fall victim to it if we go it alone, if we don't know what to look out for, if we don't have help in our corner. So don't let that happen to you. I hope you take these things to heart. Do not let self-sabotage destroy your entrepreneurial dream. You are gifted. You are meant for so much more. Show the world what you're made of. We'll chat soon. Thanks for listening to Uncage Yourself. Check out MatthewDone.com to subscribe to the podcast and view our services and helpful resources. If you enjoy the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening, or just tell a friend. Talk soon.